If you could tell somebody who either has never played DOA or maybe played Street Fighter and you know doesn't really like DOA, mm -hmm. if you could tell them something to try to kind of not necessarily convince them to play, but just give it a shot and kind of like explain why you like DOA. Fighting games are a community, and the people who play fighting games form a bond through competition that can extend into long-lasting friendships. It doesn't matter what fighting game you play. Going out to tournaments and playing against new players who challenge your skill is something that is unmatched in many other passions. Dead or Alive has a unique community that has touched the hearts and ignited a passion for competition in many people across the globe. These are the ties that bind us on the road to the Battle Royale Finals. There's always, uh, there's always a rush. There's always like you always get like an adrenaline rush because when you're playing someone, everyone's different. No matchup is the same. You know, it's not like a tr traditional fighter like in Street Fighter. You'll have characters like Bison and Guile. It's like a seven-three matchup. But in DOA, because of the triangle system, it's mostly it's character matchup, but it's also a player matchup. So say I fight someone like Quiggle or something, I can't do certain things I could do some to someone else in the matchup. So it, it's uh it, it keeps you coming back because you have to keep rethinking your strategies and it's just addicting because you always feel like you gotta work on your mix up. And when I first played DOA online, you know I played like I was I just went on there mashing, you know, and I was beating some people thinking I was like the best, just mashing buttons. And then I actually started playing some good players, and these good players like destroyed me like in seconds, like liter literally like seconds. And I always wondered, I'm like, okay, I, we're both pressing buttons, but why am I not winning? I have a faster character, why am I not winning? <laughs> I got into DOA a long time ago with an old friend in high school, actually. He had a, a demo to the Dreamcast, and he brought it over actually to school. We'd actually bring our consoles to school during like lunchtime. And he brought it and I was looking at it and I was like, oh, this game looks pretty cool. You know, I was thinking the intro was like all CG animated and all that stuff. And then when we started playing, he was like, oh no, the game plays like that. And I was like, what? The game plays like that? So as soon as I saw it like that, I, I had to buy it because it just looked really good and it was very fluid. And then uh, from there on out, I mean, I played the demo probably a billion times before I bought it. And I saw Hayabusa doing his Unidrop and that was my character ever since. I first got into DOA, I guess, like, way back in the PlayStation era. It was like, I saw advertisements for the game in magazines, and I was playing a lot of Tekken at the time, and, you know, I was really getting into 3D because I liked how everything was moving, and DOA looked, like, really polished, like, like you know, a good, good uh, another alternative. I got into DOA back in DOA 4 days, just with online play straight up Xbox, and then I found out it was a scene, went to Toledo, and that's how I met Carl, then I traveled to Philadelphia, that's how I met Kasumi Chan, and then, you know, from there on, I was just traveling around always playing, just trying to be better, trying to be the best, and then CGS came around, and that was, you know, pretty much that. And then I started coming across, you know, some of the names you know today, like uh, Master and Sweet Revenge, you know, they ended up coming in, like, one of my rooms, and, like, as you know, I got destroyed, like, bad, and I think I may have gotten, like, out of 20 matches, probably, like, one match, and it was probably lagging, and, uh, but they told me, you know, I, I was putting up a good fight, and, uh, they were saying that, you know, that they live very close to me, because, you know, I live in Houston, Texas, and they live in Dallas, Texas, and they, um, told me I should have definitely come out there, because there's a tournament coming up, it was, uh, thing DID 8 yeah DID 8 and so yeah that's that was my pretty much my first tournament 
So I met Vanessa about 10 years ago, right? It's like 2004. You count all mine, it's probably like 10 years ago, but we didn't actually know face-to-face -face right. things. So I've known him and a few of the other people for God, 10, 11 years now. Yeah, I met her online and uh, everybody was saying, oh, this girl's really good, but I never thought, like everybody back then thought, not a girl, not a girl. Unless I say, I kept hearing about him, but he had the laggiest connection Never. I have ever seen in my life. Not even I true. finally went into his room. He was up at like 2 in the morning. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, master is online. I'm like, okay, let me see how this guy is. I, oh my god, it was a trip. She was like, a, she, does you know, got, like she got dominated. It was like one of those little flip books, you know, the Disney story, just like. <laughs> And uh, I don't even remember who won, but eventually we got to play at a decent connection. But that was my first impression. Like, yeah, no wonder this guy's winning his last. Oh my god! Horrible. That's jacked up. You gotta approach the way with an open mind. I think is probably the hardest thing for a lot of people in the FGC to kind of come at it with, because there's so much that people hear about the game and about the community. And I think once people come at it as just like, okay, well, it's this is what they're presenting. And you look at it as a game itself, the game is beautiful. It's gorgeous on so many different levels. It's layered. And when it comes to just like creativity, to me, like DOA has taught me in a fighting game, how shallow a game could be or how, you know, colorful a game could be when it comes to death. Uh, just gotta approach it with an open mind, just like most things. Like I can tell you all day, Honda Civics are hot garbage. I can say this to you. You can have a whole community of people saying Honda suck. But until you get in a Honda for your first time and give it a test drive, you won't know, but if you walk into it with that preface of, oh, these cars suck, then you're probably not going to like it too much. With DOA, I love that game a lot more basically because, like, the random possibilities of it. You know, like, in most of these other 2D fighters, or, you know, the other fighters, it's like if a character gets, like, you know, a certain hit, they're going to get, like, a, all this guarantee, you know, like, damage and these hits, too. You make certain matches if you're like a half-life and one character gets this hit you know you're dead but see in doa you know it's always like you said it's a triangular system like anything can happen the closest game i could think that was close like that i felt comfortable especially why i got really good at doa because it was like third strike in a way to me with the parry system you know like an actual way to stop offense just like you know being ready to react and then change the situation although you know the counter system basically just made it so like you gotta set combo or knockdown or, or whatever. I remember in the early 2000s they had a, a commercial for Down Live 2 Hardcore and that was the first time I ever heard of it. I saw like Jan Lee doing some crazy stuff knocking people out of the windows and stuff and I was like oh I gotta get this game. So I went to my like local rental store and rented it. Hayabusa had an advertisement on there saying like the girls were knockouts and then I looked at the designs and I was like yeah these are pretty sick looking character designs. I like the stages. Picked it up, brought it home, a couple friends played it, and then the whole system was a little tricky because I never had anything like that before, but I did have a lot of fun playing, and then I've been hooked ever since. It plays, it takes a big toll on the psyche because there is a mix-up in everything. So a lot of the other games, it's kind of, it's a lot of set play where if you block something or you do something, there is, well, this is it after I block that mix-up in this case. Now it's my turn, whereas in DOA, it's like, at any given point in time, like, the fight can change. DOA is different from other fighting games because of the counter system, you know, the mind games that come with it, like the patterns that you can figure out. It's, it's pretty creative that way. Uh, it's like rock, paper, scissors, kind of, like, with your brain. So. As far as mechanics, I think General Live is probably different as in it's more of a, a game of poker, like Texas Hold'em, than, um, than it is a game of uh, chess. <laughs> One, the triangle system in the game, that's the hold, attack, and throw based system. And it makes it very diverse and unique because the mind games that come behind all of it, you have to know whether your opponent is going to attack, whether your opponent is going to try to mash you out of negative, is your opponent going to respect you. So there's a huge mind game, then there's conditioning, and just the fighting styles themselves, I haven't seen them done the way they've been done in any other game. And it's really interesting to watch how players utilize the characters. DOA is different from other fighting games because it gives you the opportunity to actually recognize your opponent's pattern and adapt to that and punish them for that. Whereas in traditional fighting games, you know, it's more of like 
spacing and making sure you're punishing unsafe attacks and uh, you know kind of dial in your combo and, and go about it like that. In this situation with DOA, it's, it's more like you get hit, but you have an opportunity to still kind of get out. You may not have a lot of opportunities, but you do have at least a chance, a fighting chance to not let them abuse the same move or the same combo. What kind of friendships have you made in the DOA community? Well, me, I have like probably actual, you know, a few actual set of friends, you know, actual friends, but the other ones are more like fans. There are people who, you know, they love my character, so they love the way I use them, you know, and so they just look at it and it just motivates them. But about the friendships, plus my main friend is this thing over here, you know, they call him MC Wiggle, 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 something like that, I don't know. Uh, I've met a lot of people, a lot of my longtime friends, like uh, Amigas, H2O Evil, uh, Vanessa, Master, Perfect Legend, Dr. Dog, Adam Legend, all these guys, you know, just from, just from traveling and playing all these years, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of friendships have happened throughout this game. I've made a lot of great friendships through DOA, um, there's actually still a lot of people that I, uh, keep in keep uh, in touch with now. Um, actually, I was back here today because uh, Terry, Piss, he uh, called me up and was like, "Hey, are we down there?" I'm like, "All right, well, I haven't been here in a couple of years. So I'll come out." So yeah, a lot of a lot of long-lasting friendships. Most people, they get 3 0 or they get beat really bad. They get mad. They get salty. We get beat with a character real bad. We will laugh at ourselves like, "Damn, we just <laughs> got on. We just got like 3 0 like." When the game went online for Xbox, uh, the, ex the original Xbox, that was like the first time I actually realized there were actually people out there that were better than me. And then I had to learn more. And then through Xbox Live, which was, you know, essentially a virtual arcade, you know, with communication and the whole setup they had for it, where like it was like uh, winter stays, you know, there was a lobby line and everything. It, yeah, I, I built good friendships through there because I really enjoyed the game and finding people that actually knew how to play it like much better than me made me want to get better myself and yeah like I think a lot of people when Xbox Live first came out that was like a bridging gap for a lot of gamers and yeah DOA was a strong one for me. Well I could say one thing we are probably the two goofiest players in this community <laughs> like we will troll we will like make jokes about the characters that no one even understands. <laughs> they don't even begin to understand what the first thing we're talking about. Like for example, if we're both using like Niall Tengu in a mirror match and one of us like <laughs> grab each other, we're gonna scream Just punishment. Like <laughs> we will literally copycat the characters and people will look at us like we're crazy, but I feel like, okay, if you can't do that, then you're taking the game too seriously. If you can't have fun while you're playing the game, you shouldn't be playing it. The friendships I made with DOA have been, you know, essentially lifelong friends, to be honest with you. I still speak with a lot of the old uh, players, and uh, obviously I've made new friends with a lot of the new players, with the, this generation of uh, DOA players. Um, obviously I met, you know, essentially the queen of DOA, which is uh, my lady Vanessa. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an awesome experience, you know, to be able to play a game and have somebody else that you love just as much play the game as well and love it too. I ended up going to a tournament, uh, which was Dead of Winter, right? Yes. So Dead of Winter. Um, Vanessa was already in a different relationship, I was in a different relationship, but that's when we actually met in person. Um, we were always friends. Um, it just it always was that way since we had our own relationships going on. And then we went into CGS. Um, both of our relationships were, uh, had gone south essentially and you know, we kind of started talking and I heard that she was you know, a little bit interested and I was, we just went from there. And now, 25 years later, you know what I mean? Uh, now we're, we're still here, we're just making it happen. I mean, it's crazy how it happens from their live game to online gameplay. There was a laggy match to meeting off in person competitions and then, you know, being together. I wish more people would act like me and him do because I really do feel like too many people are too serious. Like, they just don't know how to enjoy the game for what it is, you know, like chill out, laugh sometimes, be goofy, do something random or funny. You know, a lot of people don't do that. And it just sucks to see that everybody's walking around here miserable, hating the salty community. It kind of sucks, but... Yeah, it's like no one really wants to, you know, interact with each other. It's like there's some tension all the time between players from something that happened online. You know, online, anyone can say anything. Anyone can, you know, do anything. It's like, 
they should ignore that and just come out to the tournaments, have a good time, you know, get to know one one another so the community, you know, can, like, grow. What is it like going to tournaments compared to playing at home? Because obviously a lot of players are like, I don't need to go to a tournament, I'll just play at home or watch tournaments at home. Like, what does it really feel like? Like, how is it different, like, when you get to a tournament and you're, you're there in person? What I like about going to the actual events, it, it, it just, because I'm a little more older than a lot of the new school players, so I'm used to the old arcade type of scene where you just go and uh, put quarters up and whatnot. And just that camaraderie between, you know, uh, friends. And every time I show up here, like, or any offline event I go to, the first thing I always know is everybody's usually going to be in my room, which is the truth, before I get there. And it doesn't bother me. It's just, it's good seeing everybody together, seeing how certain players have evolved, people I've helped, or just people that have helped me, you know, how, how far they've gone with the game, through a whole, you know, especially through DOA 5's lifetime. It's... It's like, I look forward to these, you know, like, I don't know how many more I'm going to be able to do, but I, I definitely enjoy coming out and, you know, sharing the experience with everyone. Once I kind of saw what it was all about, like, the hanging out and seeing friends and, you know, just clowning and everybody cramming into one bedroom and sleeping on the floor and telling stories and the jokes that come about and the food fights and then the memorable things that come up uh, throughout all that, it was just like at a certain point, as long as I come in top 10, I don't care what else happens. Uh, and the more experience that I got from the tournaments, man, it just became more fun than anything else. But uh, now it's just a matter of, it's just time consuming. I would be at pretty much every tournament if I had more time on my hands. But the whole experience, man, I would say it's a feeling unlike anything else. I would say anybody that's in the gaming, even if you're not top three or top ten, at, at least go to one offline tournament. You have to, especially if you're in the FGC. From playing at home to coming to, you know, these tournaments, like that's one of the ways I, I came across a lot of my friends from, you know, from playing them online to offline. And it's like some friends I have from Illinois, uh, New York, where it's like I can call them up if I want to make a trip. It's like, yeah, man, come on, all you have to do is get out here. You crash at my place. So, you know, tr I mean, coming out to tournaments, like a lot of people may think, oh, it's expensive. It's like, you know, that's what, you know, what friends are for, you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you just call somebody up. Oh, I know somebody in that area. You know, can I house with you? And it's like, yeah. So realistically, you know, most of the time when I travel, um, sometimes I may pay for my lodging, but depending on where I go, I just may call a friend and say, hey, you know, may I, you know, if you're not busy that weekend, and they say, yeah, come on. So I may just pay for a flight, a uh, bus ride. I may drive, and it, you know, the expenses of it over a period of time, you know, because people start knowing you, making friends, getting to tournaments can be fairly not not that expensive, you know, if you manage the money right. See, the thing about uh, tournaments offline is that it's not just you just come to the tournament, you play, you lose, whatever, you're gone. Um, players are always willing to help you. If you have questions, just ask. Um, we always have casuals like all night long, go out to eat and stuff and uh, make new friends and stuff. So don't be shy. You have to be vocal and say like, oh, you have to introduce yourself like, oh, say I'm... I'm I'm Blackberry, uh, I'm trying to get into the game, trying to learn this character, and then, like, we're, we're super nice, so it's not like we're exclusive, we're not going to be like, oh, you can't, you can't play. It's, uh, it's fun for everybody, and we're trying to grow the scene, so if you're new to the game, just, just be vocal. The first time I went to an offline tournament, there was a lot of questions in my head on, like, what to expect. I mean, uh, whenever you play online, and especially back then, you know, there was a lot of trash talk. Like, the amount of trash talk was insane. I mean, <laughs> all the negative words you could hear, I mean, you, you just wonder, is that going to happen in real life? And how do I respond to that? What's the proper response? You know, how do you, how do you prepare for that? But when I went to my first uh, event, I think it was fun. I mean, it was just incredible to be able to be around people that love playing the game that you love to play. And then at the same time, yeah, there's some trash talk and there's some, you know, rivalries, rivalries there. But at the end of the day, it's just like, it was just a great experience, and I don't think everybody understands that. I think people that play online just think, oh, it's the same thing, or I really don't have money or time, and that's cool. I mean, everybody has their priorities, but at the end of the day, I mean, if you really love the game and you're talking about supporting the community, I'd say at least go to one tournament. I mean, give it a shot so you can kind of experience that, so you can be a, a part of that community and be able to say, hey, this was actually fun. I understand why people do it now, you know what I'm saying? Instead of just being like, I don't need to do that, you know, whatever, and then just disregarding it completely. Like, I would not... You know, recommend that to any any player that's like loving the game that they play. You know, definitely go to a, a tournament and give it a shot. 
Well, my first tournament was actually Summer Jam 6. That was when Dead or Alive 5 Vanilla came out. And for my first tournament experience, it was actually a lot of fun. Despite me being lost, I had no idea how anything worked. <laughs> I didn't know any of the players. The only player I knew was Alan Paris. Like, all these top players, like, at the time, like Master, even Xcali, Chosen One, I had never heard of any of them. So... The only person that recognized me was Alan. It was kind of cool because at least I had somebody to talk to when I got there. But as far as the tournament experience goes, it was just awesome because the feel of playing offline versus playing people online, there was just no comparison. And then two, just seeing how well I could do against the top players in the game that I love playing, it was an awesome feeling. And I would just have to recommend to everybody, you know, if you have the opportunity to come out to a tournament because it's a lot of fun and you don't know what you're missing. There's no way to explain it. There aren't enough pictures. There aren't enough interviews. There's no way to explain being at a tournament besides just coming to one.